In this video, we are going to see how Service Test Plus plays a major role in change management by using some of the best ITIL practices. What is change? A change is defined as any modification made to an entity in your IT infrastructure. What are the triggers for change? A change can be triggered when incidents are being reported or when services are being requested by users from different departments of an organization or when a root cause analysis done for a problem requires change management to provide a permanent resolution. Let's take a quick tour on change management in Service Test Plus. As discussed earlier, change can be either created from incident or service request by going into the request we can click on associate change and the change can be initiated due to this incident or service or uh, incident or a service might be triggered due to this change also by going into the problem under a specific problem we can create a new change finally we can create changes directly from the changes tab where we can choose the template and workflow and fill out the form to create the change request now when we go to the changes tab we get the list view where we could see all the changes that's either in progress or being completed and we can switch between different change filters now when a change has been created and when we look into the change this is how a change looks like we have six stages for a change which are standard six stages and each stage is being controlled by an approval process. So as you could see, every stage has to be approved and on approval, it travels to the next stage. And all the approvals and notifications that's being sent out from a change will be registered right underneath that change itself. And any changes that's happening with regards to actions, approvals, everything will be recorded right under the history of a change. Also, in the change management, we have calendar view, which gives us an idea about the approved changes that's been scheduled or which has been planned for this week or month. Now let's take a deep dive into the admin configurations that needs to be configured before we start creating changes in Service Test Plus. So we'll go right underneath the admin tab and under problem and change management, we have the following features for the change change types change types helps us to denote what type of change it is now the speciality of change type is we can also configure certain change types as pre-approved change so that when a re change request is being created with this change type it would automatically be approved so once the change travels from planning to approval there need not be any decision taken as it is already approved. Also, we could give in different color coding for different change types for easy understanding. Then we have risk factor for change. So we can mark each change denoting what is the risk involved in it. This parameter can also be used for reporting, which helps us to understand how many high risk, medium or low risk changes are being executed reason for change this helps us to explain why the change has been created change advisory board we call it as cap a cap can include subject matter experts and these experts can be either requesters or technicians who can be part of this particular cap now i'm going to create an emergency cap in service test plus and over here i am going to include requesters and technicians to take part in this particular cap so i'm adding a user as well as i'm also adding a technician into the spe specific cap and once added my cab members are into the system and i click on save change roles change roles in change management process of service desk helps us to provide access permissions and approval permissions for requesters and technicians for a change now, when we create or edit a role that's available, 
It provides us an option to pro include all users or technicians only and we can also provide view permissions, edit permissions and approval permissions on different stages of a change. Change stage. These are the standard six stages that's available in the change. Stage and status. We have six stages and on each stage we can have as much as status as we require and on each status we can edit the notification that content that goes out to the users change additional fields we have additional fields for change management process where we could include more additional information and add them right into the change templates we also have change slas Change SLAs by default will all be disabled. We can create a new SLA and we can have the SLA work based on operational hours or based on calendar hours irrespective of operational hours. And we also have SLAs being calculated based on percentages if we don't have a defined resolution time or if we have defined resolution time, we can have the escalations work based on hours. Then we have change closure code. So we can define closure codes for changes to define how the change was completed. Then we have change closure rules defining the fields that needs to be filled in before completing a stage. So these fields are stage wise. So it ensures that the fields are filled in before we travel from one stage to the other. Change custom triggers. Using change custom triggers, we can trigger automations from application based on certain conditions. I've created a custom trigger where I am associating a cap into the particular change when the category of the changes applications. Now, these scripts are already available within the application's help card. Also, more examples of this script is available on our resource section. Once we have configured the settings, we can construct change workflows based on the type of changes the organization has. This will help the change to start from the right stage with the corresponding status and move forward. Let's take a quick tour on how to construct change workflows. So again, right under the admin tab, under problem and change management, we have change workflow. We can create a workflow by providing a name, mark it as an emergency workflow. Also, I can set it as a default workflow. Now, once I click on save and configure, this is how the workflow would look like. We have six stages by default and whatever status we add will be listed right underneath the each stages. Now, how the workflow works. When a change is created and when it is being accepted on a particular stage, the change is supposed to notify a couple of roles and move to the following stage and notify the user of that particular stage. Now, with regards to notifications, this involves change roles, which we discussed earlier. So, when a change has been created for a specific department, we need to ensure the right set of users are being added to the particular role so that if a change is being triggered for HR department, the roles has to be played by members of HR department as well as where it's required, it needs to include IT and so on so that the change notification reaches the right users and the change travels accordingly so each stage has to be configured in such a way that on approving or on authorizing that particular stage it goes and notifies the roles and once it's notified it moves to the following stage and appropriate status and who needs to be notified on that particular stage so this is how we are going to configure the entire workflow for a change. Once the workflow is configured, I am going to use this workflow right into the change templates. Now, when it comes to change templates, I can create a change template. I can navigate the fields that I require on the template. 
So any additional fields that I would like to create, I can just simply drag and drop and create the additional fields from this list view or I can use the additional fields which has already been created. Also, I can say what are all the fields that needs to be set mandatory on this form. I can rearrange the structure of this form. I can mark this template as emergency template or I could set this template as a default template. I can also set the workflow that is required on this template. So I already have a normal template which I have configured it as a default template and it follows the normal workflow which we saw earlier. And on this template, I can choose what roles I require to have. Now change approver and change manager, both these roles can approve change on the approval stage. Then I can click on save and go to the next area which is field and form rules. Field and form rules in Service Desk Plus is available on incident templates, service templates and on change templates. Field and form rules are set of instructions or conditions which works on loading a form, which means when I'm choosing a template, on field change when I'm changing value of a field on the template and finally when I'm clicking on add change on the form. So what I have done is I have disabled the stage and status. Also, I have disabled the template and workflow so that the users does not choose a different workflow for a different template and change the stage and status and which totally alters the workflow that is tied up to a template. To write a rule like this, it is very simple. All I need to do is new rule, provide a rule name, choose for who it applies and then I can say based on a condition I can perform an action or if I just want it to be disabled by default I can say disable fields choose the fields from this list and click on save. Now once we have configured the form this is how our change template is going to look like. Once I click on change and do a new change the normal template will be populated by default and my field and form rules have acted upon the template which has disabled the template, the workflow, stage and status and the rest of the form is available for me to go ahead and process it further. Using this form we can create a change and click on save. Once we create a change and save it this is how the change looks like. The details are filled in the submission stage of this particular change. Now, once the details are all valid and correct, I can click on approve and the change goes from submission stage to planning stage. Under planning, I am going to add details about how I need to carry out my particular change. Now, under planning, I can also associate problem tickets or incident tickets that we discussed earlier. So, as we discussed, changes can be triggered from an incident request, a problem request or a service request. So, I can add or associate all those requests over here and it would contribute towards the analysis or planning of this particular change. Also, we can mark the downtime that is required to process this particular change. Once the details provided over here are all valid and correct, I can authorize as a planner saying that the data provided is valid and I click on save which means I have signed off the planning stage and now the change is under the approval stage. Approval is always driven by cab. So I can add the cab members which I have added earlier. So I can create cabs based on different departments and I can choose users from those different cabs that I have created. So I can choose the users. So once the users are added, I can send the change for recommendation. Now recommendation does not directly involve with approving a change. This is just getting a feedback stating if I'm with the change or against the change. So I can go ahead and share my recommendation saying that I am with the change process, please proceed. Now, once I click on save, my recommendation or my decision has been recorded over here. 
So likewise, we can add as much as members we require from different cabs send out for recommendation. Once the recommendations are done, the change manager or the change owner has to approve on the change in order to move the change for implementation. So these two roles are the only roles that can approve a change on the approval stage. So I can say the change is approved and ready to be deployed. So once I've done this as a change manager or as a change approver, the change is now ready for implementation. Under implementation, I'm going to have the downtime that's been added under the planning stage. The implementation of the change totally depends on what this change is all about. So as per this change, it's an OS upgrade on a database server. We can work on this change in form of tasks where I can add tasks manually or I can add them from a template. And all these tasks that I add, I can frame relationships and dependencies and I can work on them. Or if this change cannot be handled by tasks, I can work it as a project and associate that project to the change. So under projects, I have created a project for upgrading the OS on this database server. I have broken down the project into milestones and on each milestone, I can break it down further into multiple tasks that I require for this particular project. Now, once I've created the project, I can associate this project right to the change. So I can do it right from the project or I can go to the changes tab and click on associate project and associate the project that is available for me. So once I click on associate, the project will be added to the implementation stage of the change and I can track or the change manager or the implementer can track how the project is trending right from the implementation stage of a change. And when it comes to projects, I can add requesters or technicians to be a part of this particular project and help us speed up the process. So on completion of the project, I have successfully completed the implementation of the change. So once it is done, you can click on complete. I can say project is successfully completed and I can click on save. So this way my implementation is done. So under review, we are going to do a detailed documentation on what was the initial change all about what was the planned resources, hours, cost, and how long it took to complete it in actual time. Uh, what was the downtime where we able to meet the change within the downtime, the resources, the cost. So we are gonna do a detailed documentation right underneath the review tab so that in future, when we are planning a similar type of a change, this review is going to help us plan the change at that time. So once my review is done, I can complete my review by approving it. Review done. Then it goes to close and from there I can complete the particular change. So the notifications that happen or that was sent throughout this change will be documented right underneath the submission stage. Also, when we are into the implementation stage and when the implementation is carried out as a project, now if there is going to be a downtime or if there is going to be an announcement that I need to pass on to the user community, under actions, I can either make an announcement, share it to the user community, or I can also share it to a specific department using user groups. I can send out email notifications to group email addresses, or I can only send out notifications for different email addresses. So these are all options available to educate or notify the user community about a scheduled downtime that is going to happen. Also, any process that we do throughout this change will be tracked under the history of this particular change. And if a technician wants to go back into submission or planning to make any changes to the data or content, the changes cannot be made until or unless the entire change is rolled back into planning stage 
so even edit operations are totally documented and the approval will start all over again so now i'm going to complete the change and i'm going to say change completed successfully and click on save now the change has been successfully closed similarly now we are going to take a scenario for emergency change see how the workflow works and how the change can be configured now i'm going into new change i'm switching from normal workflow to an emergency template so the corresponding workflow gets into place the stage and status is populated and i'm going to categorize this particular issue so i'm going to do operating system uh, i'm saying it's affecting the organization i'm choosing a subject saying ms sql server down and click on save now the change is created as we can see it's been branded as an emergency change submission planning and approval has been bypassed because the workflow is set to start from implementation when we go into the submission stage we can see the approval process for this stage was skipped and over here i'm just going to update the roles that is required now reviewer is a role which has been configured for both requester and technician so i'm adding a requester andy steward and i'm clicking on save so now I have set Andy as a reviewer who is a requester. Now, once we go into the implementation stage, under the implementation stage, the change can be implemented through projects or by tasks. I'm gonna add a task. So I'm just gonna assign it to a specific technician. So I'm gonna say, check for the SQL server service i'm assigning it to a specific technician i'm clicking on save now the technician works on this particular task and then closes the task once the task is closed implementation is done so we are going to sign off on the implementation saying sql server service was down started the service and the applications are working so implementation is done now once the change goes from implementation to review according to our workflow Andy is supposed to get a notification to review the change so once the notifications are being sent out under the submission stage the notifications are shown at the bottom of the page now when the user or the requester goes to their email all the notifications will be there in their email now once the user gets the email from their mailbox they can go right into the particular email and for requesters they can click on the non login link so right under the review tab the requester can go ahead review the data that's been posted and approve the review process by clicking on complete and click on save so now the change is moved from reviewed to the close close completed the system has a track on who takes action at what stages right underneath the close stage and right underneath the history it's going to have a track on what were all the process and stages that went through this emergency change also right underneath the submission stage all the notifications that's been shared from the system is recorded so this way, the emergency change has been initiated right from the implementation stage and now has been completed successfully. So with this, we are completing our video for change management in Service Desk Plus. Thank you for watching and please feel free to email us at support at if you have any questions.